Pats. And I want to know, what do you guys think if Jeff Sims starts the game Saturday? Now, Matt Rule is basically, he said it's going to be a game time decision. Harburg's got a banged up ankle. Purdy's banged up. Sims is the only healthy one right now. It's going to go up to the game time before he makes his decision, a.k.a. game time decision. So my question is, what do you think if Jeff Sims starts the game on Saturday up in Wisconsin? All right, let me know. Call or text 402-464-5685. Again, that number, 402-464-5685. Also, feel free to let me know any of your thoughts throughout the show at that same number I just mentioned. Now, Matt Rule was asked what his message is to fans slash media criticizing offensive coordinator Marcus Satterfield. He said, and I quote, fans should do that, and end quote, but to staff he's talking about. He dismisses the notion of firing Satterfield after one year and more generally being quick to change assistance. Okay, so I actually got some texts this morning from some other folks in, in the Husker media realm, and they were like, do you think Satterfield survives the season or makes it to year two? And I was like, Matt Rule's an incredibly patient guy. He is very, very process-oriented. And he will never, obviously, coach to lose a game, but he has no problem losing games in year one for the long-term development of players. So he will play a guy, knowing he may not be as great as he can be right now, and knowing that maybe, hey, it affects the outcome of a game or not. Again, not trying to lose, but he's trying to build towards year two, build towards year three. I know that's Matt Rule's process. He's made that very, very clear. If you know anything about his history, that's what he did at Temple and Baylor. If you listen to what he said since the day he had his first press conference here. He's been very consistent. It's a process with him. He's not going to panic year one. Okay. I think he even said early on in the year that Husker fans or Nebraskans are afraid to lose or something like that. Um, and what he was saying was he's willing to go through the process, even though there might be growing pains. And I remember reacting to that being like, no, Nebraska fans aren't afraid to lose. They're just sick of losing. Um, but that was like after the third or fourth game or something like that. So for me, when I was asked, does Marcus Satterfield survive until year two by a couple of these media folks, I was like, you know, <laughs> uh, Matt rules. He's too process oriented. He's too patient. He he's, he's not, I don't think he's going to fire anybody, um, including Marcus Satterfield because he, he wants to take the time to build things and he wants to, you know, stick with the guys that he hired at least for a certain amount of time. That's the distinct impression I get. And basically, he just reiterated that at the press conference a little bit today. Now, Nebraska's Matt Rule defends his OC, Marcus Satterfield, saying the Huskers are installing a culture, and that takes time. Rule, and I quote, Marcus is fighting and scratching and punching and willing to get this thing as good as we can get it. That's all the guys are doing, end quote. So again, it's kind of what I just alluded to. Culture takes time. He talks about a process. Like, he he's a guy who's going to be incredibly patient, maybe to the annoyance of some fans out there. But that's how he has approached things in the past. That's how he's approaching it here. So there's something to be said for consistency, at least. All right, let's see what the next highlight here. Matt Rule does not assign blame on the last interception thrown by Nebraska against Maryland. And I quote, if it's wrong, it's on me. Let's just leave it at that. It's easier that way. I have a say on everything. End quote. You know, there's certain things that Matt Rule does that I just really like. I, there's certain things we got to get fixed as a football team and a program. But just as a general whole, our previous coach did not accept responsibility anywhere near often enough. He deflected. And he flat out threw other people under the bus. That is what he did way too often. Maybe not 100% of the time, but way too often. You've got a guy here. He knows things need to be different and better and improved upon. He's well aware. If you watch his body language in the post-game press conference, when asked about that interception, you can see he's well aware, you know, how big of a deal that was, just like we all are. But he's willing to accept the blame. And he's willing, I'll never forget, I'll just, I'll never forget when Scott Frost was, he basically said in year one, these aren't my players. And he used different words than that. And that, that drove me nuts. And I know that rubbed a lot of the players in the locker room wrong. Shocker, right? Matt rules the guy that's going to, 
He's an incredible motivator. Obviously, there's things that got to improve and get better unquestionably, but he's the guy that's going to have his guy's backs. And that is something short-term, long-term, media, middle-term, that's going to mean more to this football program than I think it's undervalued how much, how much that's going to mean because that's the type of thing that will rever- reverberate throughout the program. Bo Pelini was a guy that would get within one centimeter of your face and he would rip into you verbally like a monkey on a cupcake. And his players loved him. So how can that be? How can that be when a guy does that on a frequent reoccurring basis? Because he had his guys' backs. His players loved him. I don't think I've ever seen a coach yell at his players more. But they knew that he genuinely cared about them. And he knew that they had he had their backs. And that matters. So the blame... On that last play call, I've seen it dissected 44,000 different ways on Twitter and Facebook. There is a lot of potential offensive coordinators out there on social media. I'll tell you what. Okay. But the way Matt Rule is handling it, that is one way that you build culture because you build trust and you build rapport and you build something within that building when you have somebody's back. He knows whose fault it is. And he, he's right. It is partially his fault because he's the head coach, because he has his hand in everything. It's not like he just blindly took a bullet for no reason. Like, it is 100% correct that it is partially his fault. But there's someone who called the play. There's someone who threw the ball. There's someone the ball was thrown to. But that's not how he approached it. Now, whether people like it or not, I will tell you right now, if someone goes out in the media and they have my back and I'm a player and that's my coach, that means a lot to me. So I know there's a lot of frustration out there in Husker land. I kind of get the feeling some folks don't want to hear anything positive at the moment. And I get it. The frustration is insane. And oh my God, if we don't go to a bowl game because we lost the last four games of the year, it's going to be nauseating. We still got two more chances against a Wisconsin team. That's a seven point favorite. Nebraska has never won in Wisconsin in Madison since we joined the big 10. Okay. And Iowa's going to be a favorite. They're eight and two. How the blue hell does that happen? They might have, well, I'm a Nebraska football guy, and here I am going to make fun of somebody else's offense, so no, I'm not. But they might have either the second worst or the worst offense in the country, but they find ways to win. Okay, so both these last games are winnable. They're also very losable, depending on what happens. My point is, we don't go to a bowl game. Like Rico and I chatted about on Friday, you lose four straight games. That is is tough going into an offseason. So I know there's a lot of frustration right now in Husker Lamb. But I always, and I'm, I'm frustrated too. I flat out said it on social media. I've said it multiple places where I've spoken. But I never try to be a prisoner of the moment. Just like after the Michigan game. The world was going to explode, right? And I, I got to be honest, I took a lot of criticism for not agreeing with the world exploding. And then a couple of weeks later, all of a sudden, everyone's like looking at the last six games right after the bye week. And they're like, oh, we can win the next three. And then maybe two of the next three. And then maybe we can end up, you know, with eight or nine wins. It's like, I try not to be a prisoner of the frustrating or happy or whatever the moment may be. And I try to keep an overarching picture as much as I can. My point is the interception by Purdy, it was awful. Whoever you want to blame, Matt Rule said, blame me. And that's going to matter to people within that building. It'll probably matter the most to the people who should get the most blame. That's my point. All right. Let's see. We got anything else from Rule's press conference? That seems to be. Kind of what I thought would be talked about, would be asked about right now. Looks like Jeff Sims has the inside track to starting on Saturday just because he's healthy. Okay. And Rule is not looking to get rid of Satterfield after year one. Honestly, that seemed kind of predictable to me if you know anything about Matt Rule and how he approaches things. Okay. And he's not going to throw anybody under the bus. He's going to have his guys' backs. And he should accept blame because he is the head coach. So that's the rightful thing to do. Those are my big takeaways from Matt Rule's press conference. I will say this. The quarterback situation that we're in, like I mentioned, was created by these coaches. Okay, The injuries on offense, there's a lot of them. But we've got guys in there who are capable of making plays. And there needs to be better results. And in all honesty, if we just didn't turn the ball over so much. Like, we're not great on offense, but what makes us abysmal is the turnovers. It is mind-numbingly, frustratingly ridiculous, the amount of turnovers. 
Jeff Sims averages a turnover every 1.87 plays, just as an example. 